Let's get back to our top line conversation right now. Canada's GDP in the second quarter did beat Bay Street expectations. For more on this, we're now joined by our future guest, Diana Avigdor, head of trading at Barometer Capital Management. Diana, good to be with you today. Thanks for coming Thank in. Thank you very much. What, what a number, a stellar number it appears, certainly on the surface, and I think most would agree, even underneath the surface, it was very strong. What do you say? Lots of strong components. Certainly um, exports and consumptions are the main uh, pain uh, aspects that drove uh, that drove the, the beat, but there were other things. There were uh, um, uh, inventories uh, rose that could be construed positive or negative, but let's just take it as a positive. Um, exports, uh, very important for us. Um, and so I'm only highlighting those two exports and um, consumption for, for two reasons. Um, one is exports. Um, the Canadian dollar was very, very strong um, in this last quarter, which is not reflected. So. Um, I always look at why the Toronto market has not acted year to date as well as it should given this fabulous number and other economic numbers that we've had out of Canada. The stock market is supposed to be a leading indicator and Canada has not um, has not been a leading indicator to show uh, this so why um, perhaps uh, perhaps the market is watching to see what the exports are going to be doing uh, given the strength in the Canadian dollar and the second item uh, consumption uh, we've seen from the bank uh, earnings and you mentioned six for six excellent numbers mm -hmm. why aren't the financials why aren't they up more um, certainly uh, global yields have been coming down and maybe that impacts things but it's this forward-looking risk that people are, are watching mm -hmm. uh, that's not allowing the stocks to rally uh, commensurate with the uh, earnings and and the, and the great um, numbers that we've seen now third quarter in a row still they should be up 10 10 percent year to date why not on on such great numbers so it's what not, do we so, think why so, not so I think that it's looking forward um, the US banks are much cheaper Cheaper Canadian banks are trading uh, more expensive, but I shrug my shoulders and I say Canadian banks have always been expensive, mm -hmm. uh, but maybe it's this housing issue that's looming ahead. And the other thing is, um, um, if you're looking at home equity lines of credit, those have really, really gone up a lot. Um, so perhaps that speaks to uh, banks uh, lending more uh, to existing customers as opposed to new customers, also, although new mortgages were also up. But perhaps people are uh, utilizing their existing home equity lines of credit to renovate or invest or um, either way extending themselves from a debt perspective that drives consumption. Um, so what but overall here? GDP was yeah. good. Wages were up as well. Uh, much more than uh, in the U.S. Unemployment rate is good. Um, housing was a bit of a deterrent. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see what the next uh, quarter brings in terms of housing because the, the bulk of the issues in terms of the regulation and the dollar and so forth um, are going to be seen in the next quarter. But Diana, do you think then that the TSX, the markets are supposed to be leading indicators as you suggest, do you think that the TSX is going to be right in this situation? That, that as you say, the exports here in Canada have really benefited because of that lower loony and now we've got a stronger loony and that the consumer and the consumption figure likely isn't sustainable because people are probably taking out these home equity loans and, and perhaps even funding their lifestyle that way. It's a bit of a mix, Catherine. The truth is, is that Canadian equity markets don't always reflect the Canadian economy. Uh, economy. Um, our stock market is not as diversified um, as it could be for many, many structural reasons and fundamental reasons, uh, you know, um, capital flows and so forth. So part of it is that. Um, and, and the other part is um, that the, the risks looming forward um, in terms of what the Canadian dollar rally has done. But also we're in the midst of NAFTA negotiations mm -hmm. or renegotiations. There's going to be lots of unintended uh, consequences, lots of moving parts on that front. And, and you know, that is a, a bit of a risk and the deterrent. If it comes out positive, it's possible that we'll see a Canadian market that catches up. Um, particularly if energy holds steady, it doesn't need to rally. Mm -hmm. Energy could just be steady. Trade in a $10 range, as long as it's expected, um, you know, n not too much volatility is fine. Um, but until these catalysts are out of the way, um, I think that you're seeing some, um, some hesitation to invest in the Canadian market. We on the trading desks have seen, um, again, mm -hmm. foreign selling of the Canadian banks, mm -hmm. uh, which again is a head scratcher. It was a great earning season. Um, all the risk that we're talking about in terms of housing 
have yet to materialize. I guess at some point maybe they will, maybe not. Mm -hmm. But for now, it's just an on expectations for sure. Hmm. Um, I had Kurt Ryman on yesterday from BlackRock, and he had a, I thought a quite interesting chart going back about 20 years or so, looking at the U.S. markets versus the Canadian equity market. And when we've got this much of a gap on a PE basis, that that, that historically has been a good time to buy into the TSX. And, and see it kind of close up and, and trade more correlated with the U.S. on, on a P.E. basis. Um, do you agree with that? It's entirely possible. We run money differently. We need the price action to uh, confirm um, uh, an activity. Uh, I know you're, you're a, you're, you like more of a value uh, proposition, um, and, and, and it's entirely uh, possible, and, and that's what I'm saying, that if these certain risk catalysts come out of the way, entirely possible that Canada will catch up. Uh, because you have a good banking sector. You've had, as the GDP showed, um, mining and energy and export. That was positive. So if, if NAFTA, for example, comes out okay for us, and um, next quarter, and say Canadian dollar stops at 80, 81, 81 and a half, mm -hmm. is uh, where technicals show that it should sort of halt, mm -hmm. and currency markets are fairly technical, at least over the short term. And short term is a relatively long term for for currencies. Right. Um, so it's uh, you know so if it stops, it could be it could be a Goldilocks. It's interesting to see what Polos is going to do. Yeah, let's talk a little bit about that. Next week we have a rate decision. Do you think that he'll raise rates? I had Avery Shenfield on earlier, and and given the results today, he thinks that it makes more sense to write why they're raising rates next week versus a long page or a couple pages as to explain why they wouldn't be raising. Rates. Right. What do you say? <clears throat> I think it's really, I think Polos is in a tough situation. He is the first central banker to have to make a decision. Uh, uh, BOE, Bank of uh, so ECB, and Bank of is, he's right after. And the Fed is not till the 20th. He would have wanted to be the last one because, um, you know, he's already raised rates and uh, some conversation as to whether he wants to continue raising rates and continue to strengthen the Canadian dollar. Um, he would have wanted to see probably what he doesn't operate in a vacuum. Right. Uh, market has really punished yields in the last uh, this summer, so um, uh, it's possible. I think he's going to raise another quarter. Doesn't have to rush and do it in September. Mm -hmm. um, the Fed may want to do some um, balance sheet normalization first, and they may not raise rates, or, or, or that's what the U.S. dollar is telling us. Mm -hmm. um, so. I don't think he has to rush, whether he will or not. I don't know. Okay, 